Hi, Amos here, and today I have the Calyx M, the high-end portable digital audio player from the makers of the Calyx Coffee uh, through to the DAC 24192 and the very expensive $8,000 uh, Calyx Femto DAC, which has been well received by audiophiles. And I think likewise, when Calyx released the M, uh, many, uh, at least people who wanted to buy a high-end portable digital audio player were hoping that they would be able to make something that would compete with the iRivers Astell and Kern series, especially the AK240, but without the price of the AK240. And it's only fitting given that Calyx is actually from Korea, the same company as iRiver. So, speaking of the AK240, here I have one still. And if we have a look at the Calyx M and compare it to the size of the AK240, we find that it's actually considerably bigger, albeit not necessarily considerably thicker. But all the same, I think the AK240 was the portable digital audio player we assumed would be huge given its funny geometric shape, but it turned out, of course, to be smaller than we expected. A more common device to compare it to would be my iPhone 5 which I have here, and you can see that it is kind of Samsung larger than the iPhone 5 almost, although Samsung phones have got even bigger still, but thickness-wise it is definitely quite a bit chunkier. Although if I compare it to the less expensive Fio X5, you will see that it's only a little bit larger and only maybe a little bit thicker, although it's hard to see because the X5 has thick parts and thin parts. But all the same, a very large unit it certainly is. And interesting because it stores music using both a full-size SD card and a micro SD card, which probably adds to some of the space required for the unit. But it also has a very nice, large, colourful screen, which I'll take a close-up look at a bit later. Now, of course, unique to the Calyx M is the magnetic volume slider, which everyone has been talking about, both thinking good and bad things. Uh, it is, if I slide the volume up as you can see here, you'll see a display come on the screen showing the volume level. And of course if I slide it back down the same, you can disable the magnetic volume slider in the settings, which I'll show you a bit later. And if you're ever wondering if the magnetic slider can come off, yes, with a fair bit of force it does pop off. You can see it here with the magnets on the back and a piece of smooth plastic to ensure that it slides nicely, although the magnet in is quite strong so that even if I do drop it back in place it does not pop out easily and its slides, sliding action requires a reasonably firm push so it shouldn't accidentally activate in a bag although it might be shoving it into a very tight pocket. Likewise on the side you have your play, backwards and forwards buttons your headphone socket is on the top with the power button and the, mic and the SD cards and a micro USB port on the bottom either to uh, use the Calyx M to transfer files to and from cards or to use it as a digital to analog converter for your computer. So that is the outside of the Calyx M at least and now how about let's take a closer look at the user interface, which has just been updated to version 0.65. Now the Calyx M takes a few seconds to switch on, so I've gone right ahead and switched mine on already so we can jump right into it. Pressing the power button takes you into the lock screen with a clock and date at the top, and of course uh, the album art overlaying the unlock button as well as the track info. And of course to unlock it, like many Android devices, you simply swipe down. And there's the album art again, in this case, with the play button overlaying that and forward and back either side. Below which is the track info button, which brings up useful information about the file and track being played. You also have conveniently placed your shuffle and repeat buttons either side of that, as well as, the, of course, the information about the track below. If you're used to Aston and Kearns players, you'll find many similarities. If you want to go to the playlist or, or album or what have you, where you selected the track from, you press the button top right. In this case, it was the jukebox feature where I selected it from, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Top left takes you into the system settings and information about your SD cards, where you can erase an SD card. And I'll quickly go through the settings. You can turn the lock screen on and off, which is very handy if you don't want that feature at all. You can lock the hardware buttons, which if you're going to be putting the unit in a bag 
or pocket and you don't want accidental button presses, you can lock those off. A gapless playback, of course. The screen off time can be set between 15 seconds to two minutes and or be set to always be on until you turn it off. Uh, the date and time can of course be set. The language options for those of you who are not English speaking as well as Korean consist of French, German, Japanese, simplified and traditional Chinese. Going back up out of that we have the uh, library scan button of course which you'll have seen on other digital audio players. Uh, a feature I'll get back to last but you can reset the unit Check the system info, of course, and this is system 0.95, which is new as of a few days ago. And the volume control I mentioned before can be switched off instead of being switched to an on-screen volume control. And that is handy, of course, if you don't want accidental uh, volume adjustment while in a pocket or bag, or you somehow manage to lose the magnetic button and while wait, can still want to use the unit while waiting for another one. Now an interesting feature is impedance matching, which those of you who are observant saw uh, on the first setting screens at the top. You can select, I suppose it would be a gain. I don't think it, I don't know if it uh, does much for the, uh, doesn't change the output impedance as far as I know. You can uh, change the, for seven ohm to 16 ohm uh, headphones, or I suppose in-ear monitors, and that would usually be uh, very sensitive, uh, multiple balance, balanced armature in a monitor such as you get with custom IMs. Mid-range 16 ohms to 24 ohms which you have there and high impedance 24 ohms and above although it's not really high impedance as such to do with headphones I would guess it tunes the uh, output to be most suited to those. Now the feature as I mentioned before you have easy access to this setting which allows it to appear at the top of the setting screen down top of the uh, that menu at the bottom that's if you often switch between different headphones and you want easy access to change that feature very handy jumping back out of there of course like other Android devices to get between screens you swipe if you swipe to the left you get the jukebox which is a kind of mega playlist from which you can either add uh, tracks or whole albums or what have you I added everything just to demonstrate it you can add individual tracks to a playlist. You can select them, say if you've been using them and you want to create a new playlist with certain tracks. And you can edit, of course, by dragging and dropping uh, the, uh, the individual tracks through the playlist. The interesting, feature, the interesting thing about this is if I scroll through, you'll see the first track of each playlist is in a, has a bigger bar, so it makes it very clear where that you're jumping to another album in your selection. Very handy, I reckon. Anyhow, if you swipe in the other direction, of course, you get your library. And you have your usual album grid, which you see all the album art popping up there. And uh, you have your artist list, of course, in a, uh, in a continuous scroll, which you can touch a letter to jump straight to uh, artists that have that letter as their first at the beginning. And you can, of course, there's a track list as well with the same thing and a playlist list. I don't have any playlists on here, but uh, again, you have much the same kind of features as you have on other players. Scrolling, which is an issue, which was definitely an issue with the earlier versions of the firmware, is pretty good. It's a little bit jerky. You'll see my 512 pixel square artwork popping up there as the system reads it. It does take a little bit of time. Uh, scrolling you'll see a little bit jerky, you'll see a few jerks as it goes through, a few pauses, but it's not bad. It's not at all problematic, I mean, unless you go super crazy. I did an experiment whereby I listened to some high-res music and then went super crazy scrolling through it after straight after booting up, and I did manage to get the music to skip one or two times, but that was really, really pushing things. I doubt it would happen to most people, but still definitely an improvement on the older versions, and not at all really problematic enough in terms of jerkiness to worry me at all. So that is the Calyx M user interface. And last but not least, before I forget, there is now a search function. So, you know, I like Van Halen, so I can now search for Van Halen directly without having to go through and scroll through anything at all. And that is one feature that has been long requested. And there's, of course, the uh, uh, Android search function added in there now. So there we have it, the Calyx M user interface. So how does it sound? 
Well, a bit hollow. Ah, just kidding. No, I did compare the Calyx M with a variety of headphones from uh, balanced armature custom IEMs through to full-size headphones. And overall, the sound signature of the Calyx M is a very touch on the warm side, which is probably similar to what you would have read on the forums. With Starting with uh, the UERMs, I compared those uh, at request of a head fire out of my iPhone 5 and then the Calyx M and the AK240. Overall, the Calyx M has a distinct jump in uh, detail retrieval and sound quality over the iPhone 5, although the AK240 probably is a little bit of a closer match. The AK240 has just a touch more refinement, whereas the Calyx M maybe had a touch more grain. I'm not sure if with use that would go away, as I found with other electronics. But uh, with some full-size headphones, such as the uh, Sennheiser HJ100, the slightly more full-bodied sound from the Calyx M uh, was a nicer match with the HJ800s than, say, with the AK240, although both are, of course, outstanding. Likewise, the LCD X and XC sounded very good out of the Calyx M, making this a very versatile unit for everything from balanced armature IEMs through to full-sized headphones. I also tried it as a DAC plugged into my computer, and that's where it did fall a little bit behind the AK240, as I did find it to be a little bit less refined, sounding more flat compared to when playing music straight out of an SD card. Hmm. So overall, an outstanding first unit from this Korean company. Even if it doesn't have quite the refined UI or doesn't, isn't quite as compact as an AK240, it is still an outstanding unit at costing only $1,000 versus the AK240's $2,500 odd dollars. Now, of course, its real competitors are the new AK120 Mark II and AK100 Mark II, although unfortunately I don't have those on hand to compare sound quality-wise. Also, there will be the Fio X7 and there's the Sony, which I unfortunately I don't have here to compare with because I had to give the latter one back. But all the same, I think it's a great unit and sounded very good while I was listening to it. And I hope you enjoyed my video and I'll see you on HeadFi.